We own a 2021 Ford Bronco and we've been sharing our ownership experience for the past two and a half years. We're not hardcore off-roaders and we're not huge into constant modification. We just want a few light aesthetic. You're smiling, why are you smiling? Nothing. <laughs> Just every time I come out to the Bronco, you've ripped another part of it off so you can paint it. We've made some aesthetic changes and some functional upgrades, but in the big scheme of modifiers, we're pretty chill. In fact, after the last round of updates, I was completely set. And then Oracle contacted us. In a previous video, we shared how we bought Oracle's flush fit taillights for the Bronco and really, really liked them. Apparently Oracle saw that video and they're like, hey, would you guys like some of our Oculus Buy LED headlights? Well, sure. Okay, sure, we'll give that a go. We have found ourselves up here in our mountain life off-road at night far more frequently than we could have possibly imagined. So the opportunity to upgrade our headlights, sure, that sounds like a good thing. I'll talk about the installation in a second, but discovery number one with the Oracle headlights is that the stock Bronco Big Ben headlights absolutely blow. How do I know? You could uh, go into digging it around in terms of like lumen output, that kind of stuff. But I, I just, don't know what the <laughs> lumen is. Then I'm glad I did what I did, which is install one headlight and compare them. It is a radical improvement with the Oracles. Now with radically increased light output, the question is, are we then annoying people as we're driving around? And the answer is no, because the Oracle headlights have a very sharp cut off. And then with the high beams, I can see much longer distances at night with the Oracle headlights than with the stockies. Stock, high beams, Oracle high beams. I promised I was gonna talk about installation. Here goes. It's pretty much what you'd expect. You gotta pull the grill. You have to pop off the fenders a little bit, basically just some trim pieces, and then uh, remove the old headlights. And if you want a full rundown of how to install the headlights, we're not gonna do better than the video I'm linking to right here. In some reviews, I had read some concern about the fact that it's a modular design. And by modular, I mean the headlights come in three pieces, unlike the stock unit, which is just one piece. What that means in terms of installation is that you have to um, uh, you do six screws. Oh no! <laughs> to me, those six screws were not insurmountable. And having a modular package does offer some advantages. One, the box it comes in can be smaller. Two, it gives you the ability to upgrade elements down the road. For example, if they were to later make smoked inboard indicators, you could swap them out without having to swap the entire headlight units. Ooh, I like that. If there is a challenge with installation, it is beam adjustments. So most aftermarket headlights have an adjustment on the top. For the uh, Oracle Oculus headlights, they give you a tool to make that adjustment but you have to do it by feel. It's not terrible, but it is awkward. Thankfully, you do it once and then you're done. Oculus headlights come in three different versions. They make a version with a white halo, one with an amber halo, and then they make the one that we've got, which has all sorts of fun colors. So there's an outer halo, an inner halo, and a demon eye. Did you know you were driving a Bronco with demon eyes? Yeah! <laughs> For each of those individual elements, a, a wire has to be run. So I spent a fair bit of time with the install, making sure that the wires were uh, run from the headlights over to the control module in a fairly orderly fashion. I mentioned that the version of the Oculus headlights that we have are the uh, multicolor option. You're probably wondering, why would you want that? Which is a doubly good question because in most municipalities, you are not allowed to run headlights that have colors other than white or amber in them. So if you can only run colors off-road, why would you want them? Uh, I've got four use cases. Use case number one, uh, cars and coffee. Use case number two, you have a booth at SEMA and you want to gather attention. Use case number three is a real use case. Let's say you're in Glamis and you want your friends to be able to identify you. Pop on the, uh, the green or the blue or the pink and say, hey, I'm the guy with the pink halo eyes. For off-roading in a group, being visually distinct from a distance is actually pretty dang helpful. And then use case number four, make your child happy. Kiddo, what do you think about the new headlights? Did you like changing the colors? Yeah, it was fun. You can do it on a phone app or with a little remote. I like the orange on the remote because it's kind of the exact one you would want to run legally. Kiddo, give me your top three favorite colors in order. Number three. A blue color. Number two. A pinkish color. Number one. I fully expected you to go pink as your fave. What about some of the effects? The uh, flashing and that kind of stuff? I like the sound one. 
stays the same color until you make a noise. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Actually, I thought of another use case for the uh, multicolor headlights. If you are not sure if you want the white or the amber halo, get the multicolor version, and then you can make it exactly what you want, then change your mind several times. And the price difference is not that much. It's $829 for the standard headlights, and then it's $899 for the multicolor version. For the indecisive among us, that might be $70 well spent. One other note, if you want each of those individual headlight elements to show a different color, you need discrete controllers for each. So if you wanted, let's say, a red demon eye in the middle, and then you wanted a green outboard, you'd have to get an additional uh, controller. Let's talk about style. Sweetie, how do you feel about the new headlights? It's not the sort of thing I would have thought to change, but I think they look really good. It's a different look too than the signature Bronco headlights and any other aftermarket light in that it doesn't have that um, uh, lateral element that kind of comes in to the circular shape. And the conspicuous inboard amber signal is uh, reminiscent of the original Bronco, sort of a classic look rather than a modern look, which is really more our style. If I had a complaint, we already have yellow fog lights, and I think there's a little bit of clashing between the yellow color and the amber. If they have a modular approach and they make, let's say, a smoked inboard element at some point down the road, I will probably spend my good money to do that. Adding a bit more detail in terms of how the headlights function, you've got the three different um, LED zones that you can change color, but there's there's also a dedicated white outboard halo eye, and you can use an Adafuse connector to make it so that it automatically comes on anytime you turn your Bronco on. I kind of like the flexibility being able to turn it on and off, so I wired it up to one of these AUG switches. So I've started using those halos in lower visibility situations where it doesn't necessarily make sense to have your headlights on, but you want to make sure people see you, like uh, going through the supermarket parking lot. When they sent the Oculus headlights, Oracle was also kind enough to send mirror lights. I was a little bit reluctant because I really like having a quasi-stock look for our Bronco, and these push us into the ever so slightly modified space. But from a functionality perspective, they've been an excellent addition. $441 is the uh, list price. They're a really easy install. Maybe the longest part is just getting the wires across. You can wire it up to the AUX, which is Some Bronco owners will do ditch lights, and they'll put them up here kind of by the A-pillar. But for us, we like to be a little bit more low-key, and I'm also a little concerned about wind noise. So this is the most integrated solution we could possibly have. These help kind of visualize around the sides and you can rotate them. So if you needed to look that way, because there's a chupacabra coming this direction, you could just flip it that direction and then quickly roll up, roll up your window so uh, the chupacabra doesn't suck you. They're goat suckers, that's what they do. Are you a goat? No. Secret goat. What a revelation. <laughs> you just thought there was gonna be a video about headlights. <laughs> Close up and long center illumination from the headlights. Close sides from the mirror lights. And then the combo lights kind of fill in all the gaps. They work really well together. Oh, and to be slightly more low key, I got these little covers for the mirror lights. They're not just magnetic, but they've also got these little like holes. So it slots into position and I can attest that you can go through a car wash and have them not come off. Okay, what are our conclusions? Conclusion number one, the Oracle aftermarket lights really do help fill in visibility at night, both on-road and off-road. From a quality perspective, everything seems to be working just fine. One weird thing I have noted is that every once in a while, I'll lock the Bronco and then I'll look and I'll see that the uh, indicator lights are still illuminated. And I am not sure if that's an Oracle headlight thing or a Ford Bronco thing. We haven't wound up with a dead battery yet. <laughs> that's gonna require further investigation. We'll report our findings in a future video. Perhaps the biggest element is price. Okay, spending $829 to $900 on headlights is not cheap. However, if you compare it to other aftermarket lights, the vast majority of lights are somewhere between $1,200 and $1,700. Some of those um, you know, produce more light, so there's the balance between how much light do you need, how much money do you want to spend. But from our perspective, getting a budget-priced headlight that creates radically more light than the stock headlights and retains a classic aesthetic is like right in the sweet spot for us. It's absolutely what you would have sought out to purchase <laughs> if I was thinking about purchasing anything. Yes. Yeah. So even though we were not looking to upgrade our headlights, I'm really glad we were able to upgrade our headlights. But if you'd like to tell me why we've ruined our Bronco by going with an aftermarket headlight solution, now's your opportunity to do so. Leave a comment in the comment section below. If you're curious about Oracle's Oculus headlights or their mirror lights for the Bronco, there are links in the description below. And if you'd like to follow along with our Bronco ownership journey or watch our new car reviews, consider subscribing. Family, I think we've done a good job making fun colors with our headlights and explaining why better illumination is better. better. May I have a five? 
and a five, and you can get your high five. Bam!